In this example of the higher order programming environment, I am going to demonstrate a simple, what was originally text-based game called Hunt the Wumpus. This was written in the mid-1970s by my late friend Gregory Yobb and was uh, a big hit in the high school that I was going to at the time when it came out in the 1975 in creative computing. I remember hand typing the basic program into a uh, PDP-11 on a teletype machine. The basic concept is that there is a wumpus in a cave, in a, uh, which is a part of a system of 20 caves uh, shaped in a dodecahedron. So in the higher order programming environment, what I have done is implemented a cave receptor. Now in the beginning, in the, in the initial configuration state, these caves do not know how they are interconnected. However, they all emit a carrier requesting from another receptor the, uh, to provide the, um, the uh, cave topology for the entire system. So each cave is requesting what are the neighbors that it connects to. And we can see this in the code, for example. We'll look at a cave receptor. And the very first thing it does is it emits a carrier called Where Am I? Actually, it emits a carrier with a protocol called Where Am I? And to respond, the uh, cave configuration receptor, which I'll illustrate shortly, uh, requires that it has a unique ID for each of the caves. And this is generated here by the cave itself. So each cave has a unique ID and it creates a carrier with a protocol asking where it is in relationship to the other caves in the system. Now as soon as I drop a cave configuration receptor onto the surface, you'll see how all of those receptors were immediately wired to the cave configuration receptor. And it responds to those messages requesting the configuration information and it sends uh, carriers in response replying to that request. And since we don't need the cave configuration receptor, after this it immediately removed itself and we can see that these receptors are now going to move to each of the caves with the information that they requested. Now the result is a topology that looks a bit like a mess. Now we could manually unentangle these and I'm not actually going to go through that process in this video, but in the result, the receptors, after I've manually removed them, will end up looking something like this, which actually is a dodecahedron flattened. And this illustrates an interesting feature of the HOPE system, which is that receptors can configure dynamically who, in terms of what other receptors, they are connected to. We can see this in the code in the cave receptor. In the response to who or where am I, the uh, cave configuration receptor sends a protocol called you are here and this is where then the code updates both the emitters and the listeners so that we have this dynamic configuration that occurs by the cave receptors. So for example the update emitters says now that it will emit a protocol specifically for each of its neighboring caves and the listeners respond to announcements by their neighbors as well. And the interesting thing about this is that this then generates a connection of caves in the cave system that one can, uh, just by the artifact of the system diagramming or the connections, you can then see the topology of the cave network. We can then drop a text display receptor which gives us some information about where we're starting 
and also a player receptor, which gives us the a very f rudimentary UI for how we can move within the cave system. So for example, in this particular instance, which is randomized, I start in cave 7, and I can go to caves 1, 6, and 8, and there are super bats nearby, and I also smell a wumpus, and there is a bottomless pit nearby in the adjacent cave. So at this point, I really have a few options. I can try to move to a different cave, I can try to shoot the wampus, but I really have no information as to which cave I'm going to uh, stumble into if I move or if I'm going to hit the wampus if I shoot randomly into one of the neighboring caves. So let's just try moving and see what happens. The receptor, the carriers are emitted and lo and behold I actually moved to a cave that did not have super bats, a wampus, or a draft or bottomless pit. So this means that in my cave number eight, while I'm safe here, that uh, some of these caves have more than one thing in them. Um, now, if I want this information that's being displayed in the text spoken to me instead of, or in addition to uh, being displayed in this little text dialog, I could, for example, drop in a text-to-speech receptor as well. You can see how these are all wired up immediately to all of the caves in the system because they're all emitting uh, these text uh, carriers and um, the carriers that are listening to these respond. So this is why this uh, wiring, this sort of network, uh, gets a bit messy to look at. Um, but at this point now, for example, let's move to Cave 9, which I know is safe. You are in Cave number 9. Passages lead to 2, 8, 10. I feel a draft. I hear flapping. So we see how we can easily configure the system for different modes of uh, output. I'll disable this receptor for the moment. And um, one of the other interesting features that I've recently added to the higher order programming environment is the ability to qualify the receiving of a protocol in its carrier by the data in that carrier or in that signal. So, for example, in the cave receptor, we have these protocols that we're interested in, but they're qualified by whether they're actually ca containing uh, data that is meant for us, that we're interested in. So in the you are here protocol, what we're interested in is, is this really for us? Does it match our unique ID? When the player moves, we want to know, are they moving from a cave number that we are where the player is currently in or are they moving to a new cave which is also our cave number because what we want to do is remove the player flag from our current cave and assign it to the new cave so this receptor I'm sorry this uh, protocol is actually emitted to two different caves one where I am currently and one where I'm about to move to the shoot into receptor listens for uh, this particular protocol and again qualifies it by the cave number into which the arrow is going to be shot into. So this allows us to emit carriers with the protocol and the signal to just the target cave or the target receptor that is interested in not only that protocol but qualified by data in the signal. We can see this visually by the fact, I'm going to uh, clean this up a little bit, we'll get rid of, well let's see, okay we'll keep this one here, let's put it in the middle, whoops, let's move this more into the middle, okay so we can see this, I'm going to take that off the screen, put this over here a little bit. 
by the fact that when I say, let's see, let's move to, let's move back to cave number eight because we know that's safe. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have a bottomless pit and it doesn't have super bats because we were just there. So when I click on move to eight, you can see that these two receptors, that was pretty fast, went to this particular receptor here. I'm sorry, the carrier went to that receptor here and that receptor here. So let's actually watch that and by going back to cave nine and then back to cave eight. So we are, now we can move to cave nine. Ah, let's see, I am still in cave eight. Okay, so we can move to cave nine. Hmm. Oh, I see, I had accidentally disabled this cave. Okay, let's do that again. We are going to move to cave nine. Yay, now we've successfully moved to cave nine. Now we're gonna move back to cave eight and you'll see carriers going to this cave and this cave and that's the from and to caves. So a rather uh, confusing example there of illustrating how you can visually see that the carriers are qualified by the data in the signal. And I think that was just about all that I wanted to illustrate. Um, we can take a quick look at the player receptor and uh, it's a very simple essentially uh, manually created form and for each of the buttons a carrier with a particular protocol is uh, generated. So we see how simple it is to um, shoot and to move and it, this illustrates uh, the communication with other receptors. There is one other thing I wanted to illustrate which I find actually somewhat unique about this. Um, when we have a cave receptor and and we process the uh, carrier that uh, says where uh, move to, one of the things that this particular receptor does is it calls this function that says ask about our neighbors. And what ask about our neighbors does is it simply for each of the neighboring caves emits a carrier with the protocol announce. So it's interesting about this is that the carrier, I'm sorry, the receptor doesn't really need to know any information about its neighbors in the sense of does the neighbor have a wampus or does it have a bottomless pit. The, each of these receptors is very autonomous. So when we look at how the announce is handled, the receptors that receive this announce request simply say that if there's a bottomless pit that they player feels a draft, if the cave has, the neighboring cave has super bats, I hear flapping, and if the neighboring cave has a wampus, it announces I smell a wampus. And you'll notice that in the output signal, there's no information as to the specific cave number that is emitting this signal. So there's almost a sense of um, innate security it, almost built into the system in the autonomy of each of the receptors. And I think that's an interesting artifact of the uh, higher order programming environment and the uh, receptors systems. So that's it. Um, apologies for a slightly confusing uh, example, but uh, I hope you do get the point. And there is an accompanying article on the code project uh, that goes into more detail into the actual implementation. Thank you again for watching.